Good morning. It's a sunny winter's day. We're heading to the town of Kidwelly. If you're an Olympics fan, the Olympic torch when it went round, the, round Britain came along this route and through the town of Kidwelly. It's a lovely little town, as you can see, fields and the likes, so it's set down away from the sea slightly. You can get to the sea via ferry side from here, and there we have the exit from the castle. So we're on uh, Raven. As we enter Kidwelly Castle, it's hard not to be impressed by the stature of the buildings even today. This was actually built in the 1280s as a castle within a castle. If you did make it through the initial defences of a drawbridge, stones and arrows, and made it over the wall or through the gate, An inner wall held by four towers gave as much defence as the outside. You had nowhere to go, so you really were in the ultimate killing zone. I'd like to take you back a little bit further to when it was just a wooden construction on a hill with a ditch. Kidwelly Castle was still central to a really big time in Welsh history when the English, Norman, and Flemish were invading Wales. We all have a vision of what a warrior princess looks like. Quite often that's going to be Xena off the telly. However, the Welsh had Gwen Llian, and in 1136 became the only woman to lead a medieval army into battle. She was slain on the battlefield that day. Gwen Llian's death was motivation for a large uprising in Wales. Kidwelly Castle was just a few years later taken by Gwen Llian's youngest son. He later became known as Lord Rhys. Gwen Llian's ghost is said to haunt Kidwelly Castle, a headless form being seen among the grounds. Thank you for watching my video. Just finding out one little fact about where I'm riding to really is adding a bit of extra interest and intrigue, I think, to all of us. So thank you for coming along on my rides and I hope you'll join me as I ride through 2023, learning a little bit as I go. Thanks for watching, ride safe and enjoy. Lady J Rider, signing out.